You have no control or authority over my servants except for those who follow you willingly. And the call of the shaytan is mm-hmm. You will find that most of them will not be grateful people. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to my channel, my brothers and sisters. In today's video, I will be reacting to this happens when Ramadan enters. This is a new video from Rational Believer. I've made some reaction videos from this channel before and I really love their videos so far. And I'm very curious to watch this video because it is Ramadan and I'm always curious to learn more about Ramadan and I'm just curious to know what this video will be about. I think it will be very interesting. So without further ado, I'm just gonna start this video right now. Bismillah. Let's see. The Prophet says in an authentic hadith, إذا كان أول ليلة من شهر رمضان صفدة الشياطين ومردة الجنس. The Prophet Sallallahu says, when the first night of Ramadan enters upon you, صفدة الشياطين ومردة الجنس. The first thing that Allah does is He removes the influences. He removes the major devils, the the, the most aggressive of the jinn away from you and puts them in chains. So you're on this path now and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrains those shayateen from being able to influence you the way that they would be able to influence you throughout the year. What does that mean? Allah has given you power over the shayateen throughout the entire year. إِنَّ عِبَادِي لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ Allah says in the Qur'an, you have no control or authority over my servants except for those who follow you willingly. And the call of the shaytan is mm-hmm. شاكرين, You will find that most of them will not be grateful people. So you have the power to put your shaytans in chains throughout the entire year. Figuratively. By not obeying them and by reducing them and by sustaining yourself with the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who recognizes the blessings of Allah upon him will not find in himself the indecency to sin knowingly and consistently, majorly or minorly. You won't find that indecency within yourself because you know the, gratitude, you know the blessings of Allah upon you and you're, gra- you're grateful to him for them. But in Ramadan, Allah pulls them further back. And Allah makes you more aware of your blessings. So while Allah feeds you with shukr, with gratitude throughout the day, through just the very act of fasting, which should increase that gratitude, Allah also reduces the influence of the shayateen, so they become weaker than they already are. They were already weak, but now they're weaker. Hmm. Now they're really reduced. So if you think about this, Jannah is there, it should be be very, uh, it should be common sense that if there is paradise and I need to get to paradise, then no influence should get in the way. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that essentially what keeps us away from Jannah is not a lack of good deeds. It's our inability to get out of our own way and our following another path. Allah has already placed us on that path to get back home. We just have to make sure that we don't take a detour and get away from that path. So the very first thing the Prophet ﷺ mentions here is that the shayateen are restrained. You have no excuses now. You can't blame the influences. The influences have been reduced in ways that they will not be reduced throughout the entire year. It starts with that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ This is beautiful. The gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of their doors will be opened. Not just غُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ the gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of its doors will be opened. Mm-hmm. 
You don't need to be tempted. And if you just think about this, by the way, the sins that we struggle with and the bad habits that we struggle with in Ramadan are leftovers from that which comes before Ramadan. You're not going to be more tempted by sin and disobedience in Ramadan than you are outside of Ramadan. What I mean by that is that your urges to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not increase inside of Ramadan. That's not going to happen. Most people don't suddenly take up a new sin in Ramadan. It's true. <laughs> right? You don't start doing something that you weren't doing before in Ramadan in terms of sin. That's very unusual and unlikely. Instead, you have a hard time kicking the previous habits. So no new door of hellfire will be opened. The doors will not be open for you to sin. You just need to properly let go of the old ones and make strides and make way in Ramadan. And the greatest accomplishment in Ramadan that you can possibly have, beyond the recitation of the Qur'an, beyond the amount of prayer that you do, is to kick those bad habits. And that should be the greatest metric that you have in Ramadan. The number one thing you need to ask yourself is how much distance have I put between myself and those sins that were holding me back? That is going to be the standard for success because as Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah said, taqwa is not fasting long days and praying long into the night. Taqwa is taqul ma'asi, is abandoning the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abandoning the bad habits. Everything beyond that is excellence, is ihsan. So this is where you start and this is your standard of success. How distant can I make myself from those sins that have had power over me because the influence they have over me now and the one who tempts me with those influences are, more, are, are weaker now than they ever will be. So if there is ever a time to completely remove those shackles, it's now. It's now. It's now. This is such a great reminder for us in Ramadan because this is such a great opportunity for us to stop all our bad habits and to stop all our sins that are turning us away from Islam and it's very bad. So Alhamdulillah, I'm very thankful for Ramadan because it does help people a lot. I have heard many times about people not being practicing Muslims, but when it's Ramadan, then everyone wants to practice Islam and they want to pray and they want to fast. Like everyone wants to be in it. And that's the amazing thing that all Muslims, all Muslims, even Muslims who are not like so super practicing they even still want to practice Islam during Ramadan so that's so amazing such a beautiful month holy month may Allah guide us all to the straight path to the what is best for us and I'm so thankful for this time that Allah gives us every year every year Allah gives us this time to really just focus on Islam just like 100% focus on it instead of thinking too much of the worldly life you know uh, about things that will not bring you Jannah and even other things that will even bring you away from Jannah and that's not at all what we want so it's very important to remind ourselves this and to always be on the straight path. It's very important. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope to see you all in my next video, inshallah. Salam alaikum.